Hello. I'd like to make a shout out to Adrian Goodshort. I came across an interesting question in the comments from him. He asked, can Node-RED trigger non-Homebridge accessories? I thought that was a really good question, so thank you very much for asking. In this video, we'll take a look at using Node-RED to control Apple HomeKit accessories that are not defined in Node-RED. We will use accessories that we set up in Node-RED and HomeBridge to then control other accessories in Apple Home. We'll do this by using Apple Home automations that will link Node-RED accessories to control other Apple Home accessories. I'm going to flip over to my iPad screen and you can see here that I'm using a test home I set up. We'll start by setting up a light bulb in Node-RED as an example accessory for HomeKit. So we'll go back to Node-RED, and to add this light bulb, I'm going to scroll down till I find the Apple HomeKit. So I'm going to drag out this service. I'll double click it to get to the properties. Now for service, I'm going to choose light bulb. Now for the bridge, I'll go ahead and create a new bridge. So for the name, let's just call this quite simply Bridge, and then click Add. And now back to the service node, I'll call this Light Bulb. Now I'll go ahead and click on Done. Now let's include a view of the iPad. So now I'll go ahead and click on Deploy. You can see right below light bulb, it gives us some numbers. And we'll need these numbers when we go to add this device into our test home. On my iPad, I'll press Add Accessory. And now I'll press More Options. Now I'll press Bridge. And press Add Anyway. Now using the numbers that are right below the light bulb, I'll go ahead and type those in. Four. Press continue. So now I'll go ahead and choose living room for my bridge location. Leave the bridge name as it is. Press continue. Now we'll set up the light bulb. Press continue. Light bulb location. Living room is fine. Press continue. Leave the light bulb name as it is. Press continue. And then done. So now my light bulb is set up in my test home. So on my iPad, when I press the light bulb to turn it on, you can see in node red, on is now true. When I turn it off on my iPad, on is now false. So the light bulb object is working great in node red. Let's flip back over to just node red. I'm going to double click flow one, and I'm going to change this name to light bulb. and done and deploy. Now that the light bulb is set up, I'm going to add another tab. In this tab, we're going to set up a light sensor. So I'll go ahead and click on service and drag that out. Double click it. So for service, I'm going to choose light sensor. For the bridge, we'll use our predefined bridge. And for the name, let's just choose Light Sensor. And click on Done. Let's double click Flow 1, and we'll change that name to Light Sensor. And Done. I'm going to move Light Sensor over just a little bit. I'm going to add a couple of inject nodes to simulate ambient light levels on this light sensor. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll back up and add several inject nodes. To get a list of what this object is expecting, we can click on the object and then click on this help. And then if we scroll down, eventually we'll see this little hint right here. Hint. To find out what characteristics you can address, just send foobar and watch the debug tab. 
So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to copy this, and then we'll switch to the Debug tab. We'll add a Debug node, and now for this first timestamp, I'll double click it. We'll get rid of the message topic, change the payload to JSON, and insert FUBAR. Click on Done. So now I'm going to wire these together and deploy. So now when I press on FUBAR, you can see in this message, instead of foo, try one of these characteristics. Name, current ambient light level, name, status active, status fault, and so on. The characteristic name that I want to use is right here, current ambient light level. So I'm going to copy that. And then go back to this first inject node. And instead of foo, I'm going to overwrite that with current ambient light level. And rather than bar, I'll just type in 100 and done. Now I'll do the same thing for this second inject node. I'll double click it, remove this, change this to JSON, and here we'll just paste in current ambient light level, and this time we'll give it a value of 1000. And we'll name this 1000. We'll go back to this first inject node and we'll give this a name of 100 and done. Back to information. We'll now include a view of the iPad screen. So when I click on deploy, after a few seconds, we should see the light sensor object appear in test home. And there it is. We'll give it a few more seconds to refresh. On the iPad, I'll press living room. Now we see the light sensor object, where it says Zero Lux. Forgot to wire this, so let's go ahead and wire that and press Deploy. Wait a few seconds for this to update. The no response will come back in just a second. There we go. So now when I press 100, we see on the iPad we've got 100 Lux. And when I press 1000, now we see on the iPad that got updated to 1,000 lux. So again, we're simulating the amount of light on this virtual light sensor. Now let's flip to just the iPad, and we'll complete our setup here. So we're going to add an automation that will turn the light bulb on or off depending on the amount of light that's hitting the light sensor. Now we can add an automation either by pressing on automation on the left. We can also add an automation by clicking on the object we want and add an automation to. So I'm going to press on the light sensor and then add automation. The first automation will be turning off the light if the light sensor rises above 400 lux. So that's an arbitrary number that's in between 100 and 1000. So I've chosen 400 lux. I'll press next. I'm going to choose the light bulb and next and I want the light bulb to be off and then press done. I'm going to add one more automation and it'll be just the opposite. When the light sensor drops below 400, I'll click on next, press the light bulb, next and now I'm going to press the light bulb to show that I want it to be on and then press done. So now I have two automations. When the light level drops below 400 lux, turn the light bulb on. When the light level rises above 400 lux, turn the light bulb off. So now I'll click on done and click on X. We'll give this a couple seconds for the automation to take effect. Now let's get a view of Node-RED and the iPad together. When I press 1000, 
you can see in node red the current ambient light level is 1000 and that's been adjusted on the iPad. Apple Home sees 1000 lux. Now in node red when I click on 100 you can see that the iPad acted accordingly. It automatically turned on the light based on the value it sees on the light sensor. When I click on a thousand again the light bulb shuts off. One more time value of 100 has been passed light bulb turns on the value of 1000 has been passed and the light bulb turns off. That wraps it up for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Stay creative.